everyone, I'm Dr. Padmavati, Consultant Pulmonologist at Micro Hospital Calicut. Welcome to the Healthy Lab. At a time when there are vaccines in plenty, but there is shortage of antiviral drugs, life-saving oxygen, shortage of beds in hospital, and healthcare workers have to break all the odds again and step forward. At a time when may you may hear news of friends or family or relatives turning positive or falling sick or critical in hospitals. At such a time, there are many, many people like you who want to know what to do, when to do, when to worry, when to seek medical help. Those questions you want to ask but you don't know whom to ask. So today, I'm back again with an information loaded video on what to do if you or someone in your family or friends or someone in your house has symptoms of COVID or has tested for COVID. Listen on. So first of all, it's important to keep yourself up to date on the latest information from the government and trusted sources such as WHO or CDC. Local and national authorities and public health units are the best place to advise you on what people in your area should be doing to protect themselves. Next, be aware and know the full range of COVID-19 symptoms. The most common symptoms are fever, dry cough and tiredness. Other symptoms that are less common and may affect some patients are the loss of taste or smell, aches and pains in various parts of the body, headache, sore throat, nasal congestion, red eyes, diarrhea or a skin rash. Some people may have stranger symptoms that are not so common like maybe abdominal pain or a blackout or a chest pain or pains elsewhere. So even if you have any minor symptom, the first and the foremost thing that I have to say to you is don't panic and stay calm. Stay at home and isolate yourself even if you have just a few minor symptoms such as a little cough or a mild headache or a mild fever until you recover. Call your doctor or even you can contact your state or district hotlines for advice and medications or tests. If you do need things, then remain isolated. Have some friend or family to drop by the essential supplies that you need. If you really really need to leave your house or if you have family or friends living in the same house or office, then make sure you wear a medical mask so that you don't infect the others. So during this time when you're not feeling well, avoid junk food. Eat a balanced diet which is easily digestible, drink plenty of fluids, don't resort to unethical, medically unproven, social media propagated therapies and fake news. You know one cannot kill the virus inside of a human being just by inhaling very very hot steam or bathing in extremely hot scalding water or by eating so much of garlic or you know spraying yourself with bleach or disinfectants etc. That all is false news. So what should you be doing? Make sure that you have a thermometer, a pulse oximeter and maybe some paracetamol stocked in your house. So if you have the symptoms of fever or you feel breathless, keep monitoring and noting down the values of your temperature and oxygen saturation maybe every 6 to 8 hours. There is no need to keep checking every hour, it's not important. If you have high fever, maybe values of more than 100 degrees Fahrenheit for many days or if your oxygen saturation level drops below 94 or you have a very very irritating cough and a chest tightness that won't go away, then it's important that you consult a doctor. First call by telephone and if needed, you can follow the advice on over telephone or else you can visit the doctor. So inside the house, Make sure you isolate the person who is sick. Now what does that mean? This means prepare a separate room with a bathroom or an isolated space for the infected person to stay in. Make sure that room is well ventilated and open the windows frequently. Who should be in contact with this person and bring food or essential supplies should be one household member who is not at high risk and who has the fewest contact with people outside. Wear a medical mask if you have to go inside that room as the sick person to take care of them. Use separate dishes, cups, utensils that you use for eating or drinking, separate bedding from the sick person. It's important that you clean and disinfect all these frequently touched surfaces often. Monitor the sick person's symptoms regularly. Please pay special attention if the person is a high risk person for complications. 
people who are elderly or very young pregnant women people having other diseases such as uncontrolled diabetes or hypertension people with heart lung or kidney problems those who have reduced immunity like maybe cancer patients or transplant recipients etc ensure that the sick person is not completely lonely and you are monitoring their symptoms and they are taking plenty of rest and are staying hydrated so when should you seek immediate medical attention if you spot any of these red flag or danger signs severe difficulty in breathing if the person becomes confused or if there is loss of speech or mobility or there is severe chest pain or if the person loses consciousness if you find that someone in your housing community or perhaps block of flats is positive please do not panic this is going to happen very often do not stigmatize that person or family maintain the regular distancing that is advised and maintain good cleaning and sanitization protocols and ensure that their family remains isolated for one or two weeks until they turn negative but offer them as much support as possible by providing them with groceries food or medical supplies or whatever they need to tide over the crisis continue to keep in touch with them by phone or video calls and keep encouraging them remember it can be you or me today or tomorrow in the same situation Thank you for listening. Do message me on my profile if you want me to do any more videos on any important topics or if you have any doubts. I'll be really happy to clarify them. Stay safe and stay healthy.